I think the most overwhelming part of building a minimalist wardrobe is getting started. So good news, you're here with me today. You are my Hey there, fashion friends. Welcome to today's episode. I'm very happy that you've joined me here today. Today's episode... My approach doesn't require you to get rid of absolutely everything that you own, leaving you with the bare minimum. This is about building a wardrobe that reflects you and that is full of pieces that you absolutely love so that you can enjoy your wardrobe for years to come. Cultivating something that is sustaining, timeless, and transcends trends. It kind of sounded repetitive, but it got my point across, so that's the main thing. <laughs> Yet still representing our own personal style and creativity. Before we go any further, I must take the time to say thank you so much to all of you for the love and support you've given me as I have been dealing with the grieving of my younger brother, Patrick Roars, aka Bubba. It is not only was it just really nice to have those virtual hugs and comforts from you all, um, but it also made me realize that we truly have built a community here on this channel. And I feel like if there's any sort of positivity um, of this horrible tragedy, um, it's just that it, it brings people closer. And I feel like it has brought you all closer to me. And I'm so, so grateful for that. So thank you very much. So ultimately when it comes to a minimalist wardrobe, I more just mean a wardrobe that is refined, that is curated, that is intentional, allowing for you to really have that sort of foundation is going to help you to be creative and bring in more personal style and more of your personal flavor. So that is sort of our premise and what we are going off of. That is where our direction is headed. So with that, Let's get started. Number one, forget about the final number. Too many people obsess about this. It is not about the final number. Be gentle with yourself. Be realistic with yourself. If you feel like you can function off of 30 pieces, then great. However, it doesn't have to be that minimal to be a minimalist wardrobe. I bet you're trying to figure out whether or not <laughs> I was wearing this cardigan or not. I wasn't. I just put it on because it was chilly, so. You're not going crazy. A low quantity of inventory within your wardrobe does not make a minimalist wardrobe. It's more about adopting a mindset to focus on what's truly essential. So to create more clarity and function within your wardrobe. So yes, is it a lot easier to maintain and keep track of and have that functionality when you have a lower amount of inventory within your closet? Yes, of course, the lower amount you have, the easier it is for sure. But it doesn't mean that it has to be a super extreme low amount, unless that really is important to you. Maybe you have really low space. Maybe you just want to simplify, then that's fine. But it is not the number one priority. Number two, what is the purpose of your wardrobe? I mean, that is a loaded question now, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> what is the purpose to impress a boss, to impress a potential mate, to lure your partner in. <laughs> I'm more talking general life sort of direction, general sort of style and function direction. For me, as an example, how I would answer this is that I want an effortless, diverse wardrobe that brings easy, elevated, edgy style to my everyday, that is easily interchangeable and will withstand the evolution of fashion and my style over a long period of time. So I think it's important to ask yourself this question and have an answer, a solid answer before you get started because it will help drive you, it will help give you direction. It just sort of acts as your guiding posts. I think it's like anything, like anything you do in life, if you don't really have a purpose, it's hard to stay motivated and it's hard to maintain something or be consistent with something if you don't have a purpose. Number three is don't declutter, instead rationalize. So I think Decluttering is just too general and too passive. Decluttering is a great way to, I would say, maintain clutter, but I wouldn't say it is useful when it comes to wanting to refine your wardrobe or curate your wardrobe, because I think you need to be a little bit more intentional. So to clarify, rationalizing refers to the process of making things more logical efficient or organized by systematically evaluating and eliminating unnecessary elements. It involves providing logical or reasonable justifications for keeping or discarding items, streamlining possessions or activities to align with 
a specific goal or purpose. That is hitting the nail right on the head. It is just being really mindful and really paying attention to the things that you want to eliminate and figuring out why you're eliminating them and what it is then going to result in if you get rid of those things. And aligning with our last point of rationalizing and aligning with that purpose. So you're keeping that purpose in mind as you're going through and getting rid of things and really making sure that it all is running parallel together or you're going to repeat those same mistakes. One of those things that I realized when I first like got real serious about creating my minimalist wardrobe was that I really don't wear costume jewelry and I kept buying it. I kept buying costume jewelry, you know, like the really, you know, bold, specific type jewelry for certain events. So I'd buy like a really bold statement necklace for like a um, wedding or something, but it was really cheaply made and really heavy and it would like weigh down or get all twisted or what it just wasn't practical. And then I'd never wear it again. That was one of those weaknesses that I was able to then identify and be like, girl, it, no more costume jewelry. So that really helped to not only figure out why I was getting rid of something, but then it also helped me to not repeat that mistake. It helped me to then maintain that going forward. Which brings us to number four, get to know your clothing. Yep. So when I went minimalist, after I went through the process of, you know, my rationalization, the decluttering, sort of identifying my weaknesses, I was then left with the remaining pieces. And what I figured out was that I had a lot of blazers, button up shirts, t-shirts, jeans, cardigans, and my sprinkled in statement pieces. So at that point I wanted to kind of figure out, well, what are, what does this mean? What does this leave me with? What sort of style does this mean that I have? So I dove in and really figured out, okay, so my blazers and my button up shirts are really sort of my sophisticated classic pieces. My t-shirts and jeans are really more my classic casual pieces. And then my statement pieces were usually a little bit more edgy, had some special details, or were a certain style that were contrasting to my classic pieces. So then getting to know those pieces that I had was super important because then it allowed for me to identify the style types, allowed me to then identify my style. So then going forward, I had more of a direction and ultimately just had a better relationship with my clothes, understanding the fits, the fabrics, the functions, and really what it's bringing to your outfits and your wardrobe. It then helps to sustain a long-term relationship as well. Number five is identify your classics. So identifying your classics will help you to create that foundation because I think with a minimalist wardrobe, it is super important to have a good classic foundation no matter what your style type is. I've spoke about on previous episodes when I was talking about building an edgy classic wardrobe, about finding key classic pieces. Key classic pieces are pieces that go with all style types. So as an example of this, that would be like a white button up shirt. A white button up shirt you can identify in most style types out there. Same with a blazer. Most style types, maybe not all, most style types can incorporate a blazer. Jeans, same sort of thing. White t-shirt, same sort of thing. Making sure you're identifying the key classic pieces that you have. If you're wondering what key classic pieces are, I will link that video down below. Uh, it was essential pieces for an edgy classic wardrobe. But here are some key classic pieces that you can identify in your wardrobe today. Blazers, jeans, black pants, a button up shirt, t-shirts, cardigans, crew neck sweater, basic sweatshirts, trench coats. So for now that can kind of get you started. Number six is you can be any style you want to be. You can stick any word in front of minimalist and make it work. Gothic minimalist, boho minimalist, streetwear minimalist, Scandi minimalist, rocker minimalist, preppy minimalist. So you don't always have to have a minimalist sort of style aesthetic where you're super stripped back and simplified and pared down. It is super easy to still have a minimalist wardrobe and have really any style that you want to have. It is ultimately just coming down to your approach, to your perspective, to building a wardrobe. Number seven, novelty is allowed. So novelty refers to something new, original, or unusual, often with the implication of being interesting or entertaining due to its freshness or uniqueness. Biggest mistake I made when I started a minimalist wardrobe, 
is getting rid of all my novelty pieces, all of my statement pieces, all of my bolder pieces. I've sort of told this story before. There was a pair of bold black and white vertical stripe pants that I had gotten. I wore for years. They were my power pants. They made me feel so boss. And when I went minimalist, when I started creating my minimalist wardrobe, I got rid of so much of my bolder statement pieces that I even got rid of those pants. I got rid of my power pants. That's how sort of cutthroat I got because I thought that I had to sort of fit within this minimalist aesthetic in order to have a minimalist wardrobe. I got rid of every sort of thing that you would consider novelty or statement or bolder. Then I sort of realized the mistake that I made because I realized that I then had a wardrobe that didn't tell a story. It didn't tell a story about who I was, about where I've been, and it just felt lifeless. I didn't feel inspired by my wardrobe anymore. And I think that's the whole reason for this episode or for my sort of different approach to a minimalist wardrobe is trying to help people not make that same mistake. Because I do feel like novelty pieces or statement pieces or the special pieces, the custom pieces, are the pieces that reflect you and your story. And I think for me, that is a beautiful thing. And I think that is really what makes true style. And as long as these things are chosen with love and intention, I think that's all that matters. You can maintain that then for years and years and years. So I think if you have that classic foundation, then why not bring in the novelty? Because if you have a good solid foundation, there should be no issue in bringing in any sort of novelty pieces that you want because the whole idea of neutral classic foundation is that it can go with anything. When you pull in a novelty piece that is personal to you, that you love and are excited about and inspires you, you ultimately then create something that is classic, a personal classic piece. We talked about the key classic pieces that are sort of your general classic pieces that work with every style type. But when you bring in something that's special to you and you know that you're gonna love for a long time, no matter what the time is, no matter what the year is, no matter what the trends are, you ultimately then create a personal classic piece. Because this is what classic means. Classic refers to something that possesses timeless appeal, enduring quality, or lasting significance. It transcends trends and is considered to be of high quality and enduring value. Nothing in there says that it has to be this specific type of thing, like a white shirt, like a black blazer. It is just about that approach, the perspective that you take on a piece for you personally. And that is all that matters. In conclusion, a minimalist wardrobe is not about having an extreme low amount of clothing that is super neutral, basic, and classic. It's about an approach and mindset that will help you create your wardrobe by building a foundation of classics and curating items that are specific to you, whether that be novelty or anything that you see special to you. Ask any architect. You can build anything if you have a good foundation. That's how you create something sustaining. There we have it, my friends. That is how to build a minimalist wardrobe with true personal style. I hope that today's episode was helpful. Make sure to comment below with any sort of questions that you have or if there's anything that you would like to add. I always love hearing from you, the community. If you did like today's episode, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe for future weekly episodes and click the little bell to get notified when I post my new episodes. All right, well, you have a beautiful rest of your day. Stay healthy, stay safe, love, and support each other. And we will definitely be chatting soon. Bye.